KSR is back at Kroger Field for Kentucky's 31 to nothing win over Youngstown State. The first shutout in the history of Kroger Field. The last time Kentucky shut out a team, it was 2009 at Paul Brown Stadium against Miami of Ohio. It's been a long time coming for Mark Stoops' team. The defense got it done thanks to some excellent play in the end zone by Carrington Valentine. Look, we got a nice little one-on-one -on -one going between the former Wildcat Bryce Aller and Carrington Valentine. It was a great plays in the end zone. I'm sure that play happened a lot. Kroger Field, uh, on the practice fields over here at the Joe Craft Football Training Facility, but Carrington Valentine showed a great effort play, um, scraped the ball out late to give Kentucky their only takeaway of the day, but a big takeaway to preserve. That shutout, I think the secondary in general played some really good football today, specifically number 14. And they did it all without J.J. Weaver, who went out first series. We do not know his status. Mark Stoops thinks it won't be a long-term injury. Um, but not having him is a big deal moving forward. They did all of that today without Weaver. I just think the defense uh, through 12 quarters of football has been really dominant. They've only given up one drive, 50-plus yard touchdown. The opening drive to Miami, Ohio, no one else has driven down the field and scored a touchdown on this group. So they're doing some really good things. Uh, now focus shifts to the offense and what they can do to get the running game going. Yeah, and Drew, Rich Gangarella, he wasn't happy with the offense today. Uh, it took him four drives to get going. There was some turnover problems. But all in all, that we still saw some some a lot of positives, especially from that young wide receiver crew. Definitely. You had ten different people catch passes, tight ends, receivers. You mentioned the turnovers. Stoop said Levis, he can get away with them because he's out there trying to make plays. But they fumbled the ball four times. Only lost one of those. But you can't be fumbling four times when you get into the meat of your schedule playing the SEC. Stoop seemed very upset about that. When it came to talking about the defense, he was like, ah, oh, they're outstanding. That's about all he had to really say. But he seemed very upset with the way they were not holding on to the football. Yeah, but like I said, I'm still going to be excited because Dane Key, he's got a touchdown in each one of his first three games. He already has tied the school record for touchdown catches by a freshman, and we're only in game three. He's incredible. Tavion Robinson looked awesome. He tried to jump over due to the end zone. They snatched him out of midair. I mean, it was an exciting uh, game, one that could have used a little bit more offense, uh, but the Cats ultimately did get the cover. Uh, we saw Jeremy Flax go down for a little bit. Uh, the, the rushing game right now, 2.9 yards per carry. Look, at it's still not what we wanted to see. It's not the momentum we wanted to see built on after such a great second half against Florida. And they did some good things in the running game, but it was the negative plays. Tackles for loss. Ten tackles for loss for Youngstown State. Four sacks, um, six in the run game, and then a, a few more no game plays. The running game did do some good things, but they just got behind the chains way, way too much. And who avoids negative plays? Chris Rodriguez. They don't have him. He, each game goes by, each rep, he just it seems like a bigger and bigger absence not having him. Um, so they're, they're just having to do a lot to just generate any type of running attack, and it's really putting the offense behind. Um, because in a game like this, Nick, if you're, if you're struggling a little bit, you want to be able to impose your will and run over um, in a inferior competition um, with a team like Youngstown State. They're not really able to do that right now with no Tayshawn Manning today, who's probably been their best offensive lineman, I think you could argue, through three games. So you're playing without him. It's an offensive line group that hadn't played a lot together in the preseason because of injuries. No Rodriguez, the running game struggles. You get behind the chains a lot, and it leads to, I think, a sluggish start until that passing game really got ramped up. I found it interesting that the lines look pretty bad through three games so far, and you don't have Manning, you're shuffling guys around, but Stoops now after every game keeps saying he's not worried and we're going to fix it. We're now three games in. When do we actually start panicking? He said I'm not hitting the panic button, but I saw how Youngstown State had their way with the group that was out there today. I want to hit the Chris Rodriguez button. I also like that they hit the two-minute drive button, right? That was a great two-minute drive before half. Uh, despite things getting a little haywire, you put the ball on the turf in a four-minute drive, the defense gets a stop. You're able to get the two-minute offense going, get those wide receivers cooking, get some explosive big plays. It, it, it's fun to be here in a 31-point shutout win and have some things to gripe about, uh, but that's where we're at with the Kentucky football program. Ninth-ranked team in the country. There's still a lot to like, just like we like our friends at Port Royal Plants, right? In, <laughs> Port Royal in Henry nice. County in Kentucky. Big fan of the back, the bomb. Yeah, the I rub bomb. some of that on my back, right? Take some of that pain away. Try them out today. PortRoyalPlants.com.
today. Big thanks to them for sponsoring all of our content here. From a top Kroger field, we feel like celebrities yeah, up here. I want here. to talk about the plants on your shirt, too. This is quite the game day attire. Oh, we, we really did it big. We're doing it big. Uh, it, it's you, you can let your hair down a little bit against the FCS foe, right? Yeah. And I don't have any hair to let down, so I've got to be loud and proud with my flamingos, uh, not penguins. Uh, penguins out, flamingos in, wildcats in. 3-0. and 3-0 and for the fourth time under Mark Stoops. You gotta it's let good. the flamingos fly when the Cardinals can't fly in state. <laughs> so the Seminoles chopping. And Kentucky gets a big win. Almost a Bluegrass Daily Double. It has to be the same day, but but close enough. A nice little double dip here in the Bluegrass. As cats are 3-0. and All eyes are on that Ole Miss game, but Northern Illinois beating Vanderbilt as we speak right Love now, that. so we'll see how that shakes out. Um, the Huskies uh, could be a, a difficult challenge, and Kentucky's probably going to have to play better than they did this week to uh, cruise to an easy victory there. Before we go, i got to give a shout-out. We mentioned this, this shutout, mm -hmm. first since 2009. Tony Romas, I got fired for going to that Miami-Ohio game. I got fired that day, Nick, for going to a football game. Apparently, you're supposed to show up for your shift when you're scheduled. <laughs> but that's what happened the last time there was a shutout, and it's nice to just close that book of that long drought of not having shutouts. So, so thank you, Kentucky defense, and thank you, Tony Romas, for giving me a path to this. Stoops family party at Tony Romas tonight? Anybody? No? Downtown. How about that? Downtown. Downtown. It's going to be a fun night for Mark Stoops. They're celebrating the win 31 to nothing over his hometown, Youngstown State.